Well, good morning. Merry Christmas. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. For those of you that are regular members here at Harvester, I'm not Russ. <laughs> There's no outline. No notes. Yes, and, and we will be out on time. <laughs> Don't tell myself that. Don't get upset with me. No, he heard that. I'm sure he did. He did. He's texting me now. He's making a recording of it. Exactly. <laughs> Well, today is all about the Christmas story, and the Christmas story, as we read in Luke uh, 2, is, is the one that's famous to read. There's a piece in there, it's chapter 11, that talks about today the Savior, our Messiah, is born in the little town of Bethlehem. Well, the Christmas story, it's a great story, it's one that we uh, know, that we've, for a lot of us that have been growing up in the church, we read it. But today, what I want to ask you is, what's your Christmas story? Right? We all have a Christmas story, something that we think about when Christmas happens. We remember things. Um, we have nostalgia. You know, for some, it's family. It's all about the family. Uh, for others, it's about the gifts. And that's not a mean thing. Sometimes it is about gift giving. We like to give gifts and receive gifts. Um, for others, it's about the snow and cold weather. 75 today, so <laughs> that's not going to happen here. But... You know, the interesting thing about the Christmas story, when you look at it through people's eyes, is, you know, when you think about, for some, it's family. You know, what happens when we think about family, some, what happens to the people who don't have a family, right? The folks that are lonely, um, who Christmas brings the memory of lost loved ones. Uh, when you think about the gifts, about those who are poor, who don't have the means to have gifts. And we think about those of us in Florida. We're not going to see snow unless it's on TV. Um, so... Now, all those things, you know, there's nothing wrong with them, but they're not the true meaning of Christmas. They're not the Christmas story. And when I think about Christmas, I think about that perfect present. Does everyone have their perfect present when they were growing up? You have to, you have to maybe you have to think, but there always is that one Christmas that you're thinking about that gift. That gift that you, you know, hopefully we're going to get, that you had to get. For me, I was six years old. I, was, I think it was like 1979, and it was the big green bike. I wanted this thing like no tomorrow. And I prayed. It was probably one of my first preludes in the prayer. I asked God, I said, Lord, you know, I've been good all year to my best ability. I did add that uh, to the best of my ability. But if I could get the green, it was called the Green Monster, actually, the Green Monster bike, everything's going to be all right. Because for me, as a six year old, it was like freedom. I could get around and I actually, and I actually could, you know, have this awesome bike that no one else had in my, in my neighborhood. So, you know, when you look at it, think about your gift. You know, for some of you, it might have been a doll. Could have been a uh, Red Rider BB gun. Uh, could have been a lot of things, but we all have that gift. And there's usually three parts to a perfect gift. There's usually it starts with a hope. Uh, just like the Christmas candle, there's a hope. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about hope. And there's, there's a need. There's an expectation we have about that gift. And when we read in the Bible, in Isaiah uh, 9, chapter 9, verse 6, it says, this is before Christ was born. There's, it's a prophecy that talks about the hope. For us today, there will be born a Savior, and the government will fall on his shoulders, and he will fulfill all that is written about him in the book. And so there's this hope of all the generations before that there would be this deliverance from sin. And so this, this great need, this hope, this longing, um, starts to happen. So think about your present. So for me, if you close your eyes and think about your present, I thought about my bike. Now this bike, now it's probably like this high, and it had the big seat, so you could put like two people on it. It had the big seat, and it had these monster, I mean like monster tires, and these big shocks on it, and it was all black, and it had the green seat. So for me, that's what I was picturing in my head. I had this hope that that's what I was going to see um, come Christmas Day. And if you think about it, what is, you know, what was the expectation for Christ to come? You know, a lot of the folks during Christ's day, they pictured Christ as a king. They pictured him as someone, you know, coming out of, uh, I don't know, if you watch The Hobbit, The Fellowship of the Rings, this kind of grand king that was going to, you know, free everybody, you know, come in, lead an army, take out the Romans, and all of Israel was going to be free. Um, it was more of a king of power. Of worldly power is kind of how the world was viewing um, how Christ would come. And the Christmas story tells us quite differently. So the hope was still deliverance. Uh, but I think in the Bible, that hope was a little off when they thought about their expectation of what, what the Christ would, look, would actually be. So we have this hope. 
We hope for, we hope for this, this package, our present, our gift, and then something happens, right? So the second thing that usually happens is that we have an event. So for me, it was Christmas morning. I w went down and my, and then for those of you that, you know, live back in this day, you usually, your parents made you wear onesies. I call them the grown-up onesie. It was like a blue t terry cloth, like, like felt thing that you wore. It had the little white, like plastic on the bottom so you could slide on the linoleum. Does, any, does anyone have this? All right, see you then. All right, do some of this, right? So I came streaking down in those. And the event was there. So it was in the morning. It was the first thing. Snow was on the ground. And because I lived up north at the time. And uh, we lived on this huge hill. And, and my hill where I lived, we lived on top of this hill. And there was a big hill. And you got down to the bottom of it. And right to the left was the park. It was this park that we could all, where we hung out as neighborhood kids. So my event was I actually realized, the realization comes, right? I got my bike. So I'm seeing it. It's got the red bow on it. You know, and of course, you know, as all of us get, I'm touching it. I'm checking out the, you know, the, the foam seat. I'm, you know, jumping up and down on it to see how the shocks work. They didn't work really well there. I think they were there for show. I mean, they, they really just, they didn't bounce like a mountain bike today. It just kind of like, it just was really hard and stiff. But anyway, but it was still big. And this thing was heavy. It was like a bike. I mean, like a real, like a motorcycle almost. I think it weighed like 150 pounds. It, 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 at least for like a six-year-old, I could barely pick it up. I mean, literally, like I had the kickstand. It was like a big, like steel kickstand. So it was this heavy bike, huge green seat. And for me, it was like everything I wanted. And I could smell the plastic, you know, the, it was still the rubber tires I could smell. And, you know, I remember the, the squishy seat and just the hard, you know, cold steel of it. And I thought, this is my bike. So there was my realization. I, I you know, I had my bike. And I think about how that must have been if you, if you could take a step back and you think about the realization when Christ was born. So here's these shepherds. They're kind of out there. I'm sure the last thing in the world they were, they were praying for in their, they were probably praying for like a fleece jacket because they were really cold. Um, and here come these angels that say, hey, you know, this child's born. So the shepherds go, well, it's kind of weird. I see a, an angel. So I guess we'll go check this thing out. And so they go, and they come, and the wise men come. And instead of a palace, what do they find? It's not a palace. It's a stable. So I don't know. Have any of you ever been in a stable? Okay. I've cleaned stables. Let me tell you something about a stable. You know, the, the picture up there that they show where, like, you know, the, the ox, and everyone's happy, and, you know, the fresh hay, and, you know, it's all, you know, it's all good now. That's not what it is. It's not at all. Tell you, let me tell you what a stable's like. Number one, it smells. It doesn't smell just because of, of the animal stuff that goes on in there. It smells because it's just, like, dusty, and, like, everything just, just stays there. It, it, like, you try to clean it out, but the dust just stays there. And you, when you go in, you immediately have, if you have any type of, like, allergic allergies, you're going to be, you know, that's why farmers, they carry handkerchiefs. It's not the sweat of their brow, so they can blow their nose when they go in the stable. I'm telling you, that's exactly why it happens. And if you ever had to clean a stable, it's a pitchfork. You know, they use a pitchfork because you're just grabbing everything that's in the hay and starting to put it in a wheelbarrow and take it out. And... You know, the animals, they don't sound lovingly. It's not like the, when the sheep bleats. It's not like it's bad. No, it's, it's just incessant bottom that they just don't stop. I mean, it's hours, hours of it. Because I've had sheep, and, and that's all they do. They just bow. That's all they do. So I, I don't think it was this, you know, when I think about the Christmas story, you know, I, I think if we, if we really kind of picture it the way it really happened, I'm thinking Mary probably was exhausted. I don't think she had, like, you know, cover-up makeup on. And, you know, it was a hallmark moment. I don't think that was it. I'm sure she was exhausted. She just gave birth. Um, can I get, you know, there's a lot of ladies in here, amen, on the birth. I mean, you know, you're not going to be, like, ready to see people. Uh, I'm sure Joseph was a mess. You know, he's, he's probably thinking, like, I'm in a stable, really? My kid's born in a stable. My wife just is here. Where are we, what are we going to do? And then you've got people showing up, right? You've got these, like, shepherds coming in, like, poking their head around. Then you've got these three guys that show up with, like, gifts. And they're, like, strangers. You're probably happy when you got the gold. I know if I was Joseph, I'd have been happy when I got the gold. But Frank and Seth and Murr, I'm not sure how I would have responded to that. Other than that, maybe I could sell it, but... Anyway, I'm thinking, you know, when you think about that event, you know, from a human standard, you know, I think that, you know, all those things, probably the realization of it was kind of surreal, you know, as Mary was taking it all in. Uh, but as history kind of puts on its story and you think back on it, I'm sure Mary, as she got older, reflected about that day and thought about how wonderful that day was for the simple fact that she brought in her son and he was born. And she knew that this child that she was born to her was no normal child, 
but that it was the Son of God. And I can't imagine uh, her faith it, it, to follow through with that and, and to be a good servant and do that. But how wonderful it would have been to be those wise men and those shepherds to experience the birth of their Savior and to see him. And I think that's what you know, Christmas is all about. It's about that expectation as you know, all the Jewish people, when we look today and we see back and we think about all the hopes and all the struggles that have happened throughout history, we can always come on this day and remember that the hope that we have, the peace that we have in Christ, and remember Christmas for those things. Because it's just like the, the unity candle up here has, there's peace, love, joy, and hope. And those are all the things that we remind them of Christmas. So that those families that have lost loved ones remember the hope to be reunited someday. For those that don't have gifts, we know that the greatest gift is already there. It's not under the tree, it's in the future, and it's in our hearts. And snow, well, snow melts. And, you know, as we can attest, we don't see snow. Um, so, you know, the weather kind of changes. But I think you know, the Christmas story really is all about our Savior. So the last thing is, so I have my bike. My realization was there. Now I have a response. Right? The last thing on a gift is the response. So you can, like, hide your gift. Like, I could have hide my, you know, put my bike and, like, just put it in my room and let it sit there and just looked at it, which I did for, like, an hour. Uh, but then you always, you want to do what? to tell people about your gift. So we didn't have, like, then we didn't have mobile phones or anything, so it was just basically everyone would show up and you'd start talking about your gifts. So I had my gift, and I remember it was uh, this little kid, Sean, we were at the house, and he gave me the double dog dare to take the bike down the hill. <laughs> now you understand that. So six-year-old, it's just like in the middle of, I think the route, I'm reflecting that I think that the actual road was plowed. I, can't, I do remember, but I remember being on top of my bike, and this was Christmas Day, and I'm on the hill. And this hill was like Everest. That's what it looked like for a six-year-old. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I'm a little excited, but you know, you got a double dog there. There's no, there's no turning back here. So my response was, okay, I'm taking the bike. So I start pedaling, and then it, it went faster and faster. And you've ever ridden a bike where the pedals go faster than you can pedal? Okay, you've got two things to do. You either bail, or you pick up your legs, and you just kind of go for the ride. So that's what I did. Picked up my legs, and, and the bike's just going faster and faster. And so I'm thinking to myself, Wow, I'm gonna die on my on my green monster bike, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I'm flying down this hill, so I go flying down the hill, and I, and I know by the grace of God, do I? I end up going into the little park area, and I ride up into the, like the the side of the embankment into the snow, and then, you know then I plant my bike in there and go fly into there. It was cold, um, but I did do it. And every one of my friends came down and we talked about the bike. So we were talking about my bike and I was talking about how cool it was and then we all got to ride our bikes around and I think it was like 30 degrees. And you know, back then, you know, I don't know, parents were just more liberal about just how you let your kids do things. I don't remember my mom like yelling at me or anything and you know, I think I still have my blue little laser shoot on with those. I think I might have wore a hat because it was pretty cold. Um, but you know, we just rode our bikes all day. And we were all happy that we got our gifts and we, and we explained those things. So. A more important gift, you know, obviously is our response to how we take the gift of Christ, right? <coughs> so we have two things we can do. You know, when you have Jesus, you, as uh, I saw up here earlier, you know, the innkeeper, as an innkeeper, the innkeeper had two choices. You can say there's no room or there's room. And it's really that way with Jesus, right? You know, Jesus comes to us on this day and he says, here I am. And we either accept that Jesus Christ is who he is and we accept him into our hearts or we don't. And for this, those of us who are here on Christmas Day, i got to believe that most of us, not all of us, would take that ladder and we are, we are walking with, in faith and we have accepted Christ as our Savior. But the response goes further than that. Christ doesn't say, just accept me, right? There's a lot of things in Scripture that talk about we're a light and we are to shine. So if you don't have a bike, I understand, but we have something much better than a bike. We have Jesus. And so for Jesus... This Christmas Day, we are to share our light. So we go out into the world, and we share that light with the world. It doesn't mean it's easy or that it's going to always be great, but it's what we're called to do. And it's great joy, peace, love, and his peace will, will, will guide us to do that. So today, as we go out and we celebrate the rest of Christmas, let's make sure that we remember to be a light to the world and to enjoy this day with our friends and family. Thank you. Amen.